Hi folks, and welcome back to another episode of Forgotten Knowledge. Farmers and ranchers have always had to be innovative. Now, part of that, I'm sure, stems from the fact that uh, most of the time they they live quite a ways from a village or town, and, and so they've had to be inventive and uh, decision makers and problem solvers all of their lives, every day of their life, even today. They still have to be problem solvers and decision makers. You know, when to plant, when to harvest, when to buy, when to sell. Uh, do we trust the weatherman or should we just go ahead and, and cut the hay today? So farmers and ranchers faced with dozens of decisions every day. And every day they have to be a problem solver too to figure out what to do. I love to tell the true story of my father. What a master of uh, problem solving he was throughout his lifetime. Um, as I've told you in these videos before, I grew up on a small diversified livestock farm in the Ozark Hills. We had some hogs, uh, we milked a few cows, usually never more than about 10 or 12 by hand. And we also had a small herd of beef cows. Now dad was really big on being efficient too. So he thought a beef herd of about 25 cows was probably the ultimate in maximizing your efficiency because you just had to have one bull. And uh, he was all about saving money too. But he also realized that when he kept back replacement heifers, uh, you couldn't have them bred to their sire. So about once every three years when he would keep back, you know, five or six, seven replacement heifers, he would sell the old bull that was their father and he would immediately go out and buy a young yearling bull because he could get those a lot cheaper than he could a breeding age bull. Now the yearling bull was cheaper, but knowing that it would be nine or 10 months before he would be utilized to breed the cows, uh, that gave him plenty of time to grow in both size and sexual maturity where he could handle the 20 or 25 cows that we had. Now he wouldn't sell the old bull until he was satisfied that every one of his cows was bred. Uh, now he didn't, he wouldn't hire a veterinarian to come out and pregnancy check those cows. He would instead, if he hadn't seen a cow in standing heat in about 21 days, he was sure they were bred. So he would sell that old bull and immediately go out and, and try to find a young bull. So I remember the one time we, we traveled, uh, about 60 miles to a purebred breeder's farm. Now, dad was really big on purebred black Angus bulls. Now, you gotta keep in mind, when I was a kid, there were really only three beef breeds uh, of any significance here in this part of the United States. Uh, Hereford, Angus, and Shorthorn. And Hereford, by far, was the most prevalent. All of our neighbors, north, south, east, and west of us, on every side ran Hereford cattle. And our cow herd was mixed up with everything. Most of them had originated from a dairy herd, so they had a lot of either Holstein or Jersey in them. And dad thought that black Angus bull would make the most consistent calves to sell. And, and I think he was right, but he he really was high on Angus. And, and we were one of the first people in that area to join the American Angus Association, still have a life membership to it. So we traveled about 60 miles to this purebred Angus breeder. And dad picked out what he thought was just the greatest looking Angus bull he had ever seen, just a yearling. Now this is somewhere around 1960. And all beef cattle were much shorter and more compact than they are today. But Angus especially, I mean, this yearling bull probably wouldn't stand, you know, more than, I don't know, 48 inches tall, uh, kind of like some of the miniature breeds today. but. He was a great bull other than, than his size. He was a little small. So, but dad made a good deal on him. We loaded him in a, a pickup with stock racks and hauled him back to our place. And I can vividly remember as we pulled in the lane to go down to the barn to unload him, dad just stopped real abruptly in the truck and put his head down on the steering wheel. And I knew something was wrong. And I said, dad, is there something wrong? And he just, he points, and there is his best beef cow in standing heat, two or three other cows riding her. And he said, what are we gonna do? 
Well, now you're probably watching this at home and saying, well, you know, you just call the AI technician and have her artificially inseminated. No, not in Ozarks of 1960. That was akin to maybe snake oil or black magic. If you needed a cow impregnated, you needed a bull there to get the job done. So dad thought for a little bit, I could hear the problem solving wheels turning in his head. And he said, well, let's, let's go back and unload the little bull in the corral and we'll drive that cow in. So we, uh, we did that. We unloaded the, the young yearling bull and we drove in the uh, big, big framed black cow, probably half Holstein, something like that. But she was really tall. And bless that little bull's heart, uh, he knew what he was supposed to do and he tried his utmost. And I can still remember him falling off of her and he actually broke his tail down below the tail head. The rest of the time we owned him for the next three or four years, he had a crooked tail. And that was from trying to breed that cow. He, he just couldn't reach her. It was just a physical impossibility. Well, now you're probably thinking, well, just, you know, let the neighbors bull. Uh, service that cow. Well, again, all the neighbors had Herefords, and Dad was bound and determined that all of his calves were going to be black. So that wasn't an option either. And he looked over at me, and he said, Son, go up to the shop and get the pick and shovel. And I'm eight, nine years old. I'm, I'm a little confused at that, but, you know, I was taught to obey my parents, so I went up and got the pick and shovel. Now, I've told you we had this... Uh, uh, this corral where the bull and the cow were was right next to the barn, our old grade C dairy barn. We had dirt floor. There were six side-by-side -side wooden stanchions where the cow, you could lock the cow's head while you milked them. And uh, I brought back the pick and shovel and he said, uh, okay, son, dig me a hole about three feet in diameter, back about six feet from the stanchion, make it a uh, foot, foot and a half deep. I had no idea what was going on, but I started digging. And I put a perfectly round hole about a foot and a half deep back about six feet from the stanchion. Well, he put a little feed up in the stanchion and ran the cow that was in heat in. And she had been in this barn many times before, so she knew there was grain associated with that. So she stuck her head in the stanchion. Dad locked it, and her rear feet just went right down in that hole. And he said, okay, son, turn that little bull in now. So I opened the gate and in come that little bull. And folks, I became a real believer that there is a solution to every problem. That bull was able to get to the cow. He impregnated her. And I was convinced that every problem is solvable if you just study on it for a little while. I think it just shows perfectly how innovative and thought-provoking farmers have to be to succeed. And it's I think it's still true today. So I hope you enjoyed that story. I um, hope you'll tune in next time for another episode of Forgotten Knowledge. Thanks for tuning in.